Okay, folks, welcome back to another lesson. So I'm just going to gloss over the various hidden skills and the order I'm going to gloss them over is so I'm going to start with fists and then just go all the way around. So it's not going to be the same order as I did in the last video. So feel free to skip around so you can see what each weapon has. So let's get through the fists. The fist has two hidden skills. Um, I'm not going to tell disclose the location of the hidden skills just to prevent any enemy spoilers but if you want to know where you can get these hidden skills from um, I'll have it put in the description below so you can take a look at the document or whatever I link so you can know where to get them so first up is a Zuna drop really fun really cool ability and yeah next up is Tiger Claws really fun to work with with the fists and so yeah fists only has two hidden skills but both are really cool Spear has two skills as well. First is Bracing Breeze. Show that to you again. Definitely a lot of fun. I love it personally. And there's Triple Threat, which is in my opinion one of the coolest abilities in the entire game. So I'm really happy to be able to do this. Yeah, that's it. Axe only has one hidden skill, unfortunately, but I still think it's a pretty good one. Spirit Storm, which I have a lot of fun with, and you can actually cancel some of the recovery frames, as you see here, by just dodging out of it. So it's a lot more useful than you may realize. But yeah, pretty cool. Next is Split Staff, which unfortunately also only has one hidden skill, which is Roar Power. Roar Power has a ton of range, and it's pretty fun to use. I like using it. But yeah, that's it. Next is Kusari Gama, which only has two hidden skills. Both are really cool in my opinion. Second Wind is a follow-up to Whirlwind. And as you can see, can basically pull an enemy to you and fling them. It's so nice. I really like it. It's just so satisfying to basically John Cena body slam somebody. Another skill that it has is Water Drop, which is a follow-up to Leaping Strike. So normally with Leaping Strike, you can just jump up and then you can plunge attack. But with Water Drop, now you can attack someone at range. And it recently got buffed, so it's a lot of fun to work with. It's a lot faster than the tooltip might suggest. But yeah, just two. Dual Sword got quite a few hidden skills. It's got four of them. So one of the ones that I got is called Punish the Proud, which is a quite disrespectful way to kick your opponents away. It is a parry of sorts, so yeah, it's definitely it's definitely one of those abilities that'll give you a good laugh. Another ability that it has is a low stance only move called Double Headed Slice, which is so fun. It's actually a pretty cool ability, I like it. But yeah, it's pretty neat. Got a hit and then a bunch of little hits. Another ability that it has is Ultimate Sign of the Cross, which is a follow-up to Sign of the Cross 2. The Sign of the Cross 2 is generally pretty quick, but then Ultimate Sign of the Cross has a follow-up, and it actually has remarkably good tracking. So what can happen is that a target might get behind you, and then your character will rotate in order to successfully hit the follow-up. So pretty rad. Dragon Claw is one of the grapples, so it's similar... Uh, you know how Izuna Drop will compete with Grapple? Well, so does Dragon Claw for the Dual Swords, and it gives you a ton of animal back. And one thing that you may notice, if you do this aside from the long animation, is that it actually helps you regenerate your key as well, just because that's just how it works. So it's pretty neat, pretty cool. That's it for the Dual Swords, unfortunately. Let's get to the Odachi. The Odachi has two hidden skills. The first one is Swirling Snow which is, it may look a little lackluster, but many human opponents cannot adequately deal with this just because of the nature of the ability. And it's really good if, if you have like a bunch of targets around you, and you just need them to get away. So I think it's pretty cool. Next is Dragon Horn. This is very similar to Dragon Claw in which it, it greatly increases your anima and also helps you regenerate your key. And yeah, it's kind of menacing to stab somebody with a big Odachi. <laughs> so I think it's pretty neat. Next is Tanfa. Uh, Tanfa has only one hidden skill, which I think is actually really cool. Don't let what people on the internet tell you otherwise. Um, one interesting thing with this, besides the fact that it's a really good flanking ability, is pretty fast. And yes, there is a roar that goes with it every time. The last hit actually does ignore guards, so it pierces guard. So 
yeah, pretty cool ability. I'm really happy that they had this in the game. It definitely adds a lot of flavor to Tanfa aside from some of the other skills that it got. Um, next is Switchglaive. So Switchglaive got three hidden skills. So let's start with this one, Fleeting Edge. Um, the tooltip actually is slower than what it is in combat. It got buffed recently, so it's actually a lot faster. But you can move around your opponent. So many enemies will kind of lock themselves into certain animations. And so if you know what their animations are going to be, use this. You can sidestep them the entire time while attacking. So it definitely feels pretty cool. Next is Windswept. Windswept is certainly a lot of fun. It has sports a wide amount of range. Might seem a little slow, but I think it's pretty cool. And it's really good against opponents that block. But most likely, many players who play the Switchglaive really enjoy Arc of Chaos simply because it's insta range and you're basically boomeranging your entire Switchglaive. So it's a lot of fun. I really like this ability too. And there's all sorts of cool potential things you can do with it. Um, hatchets. There is unfortunately only one hidden skill, but it is a beauty. Throw your hatchets all around you. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's a really great ability and I'm very happy to have this in the game. Now I'm going to save sword. I know I said I was going to go around, but there are actually hidden skills in here in this stuff. So let's start with the ninja hidden skills, which are all at the top. You played Ninja Gaiden. So yeah, I guess that's a spoiler. You may recognize these three hidden skills. So this is very similar to Art of the Inferno. And then you have Art of the Windblades, effectively. And then you have Art of the Piercing Void. So I was very happy to have these three things included. And I think they're all great. And they do things that no other ninjutsu can do. So I'm very happy to include these in the game. So I'll just show them to you real quick. The equivalent of Art of the Inferno. The equivalent of Art of the Windblades. And the equivalent of Art of the Piercing Void. They're all great. Okay, let's go on to magic. There is, I believe, only one hidden magic skill. Luminous Blade Talisman. It's actually pretty good for keeping certain enemies staggered. Plus, it just looks cool to have a lightsaber come out of your left hand. I mean, why not? So yeah, definitely a pretty cool looking ability. There are actually hidden samurai and shifling skills. So let me showcase the hidden shifling skills. These all modify your charged attacks for each of the respective forms. I know I haven't talked about Yokai Shift yet or any real shifting mechanic, but when we get to them, it's cool to know that you can upgrade each of these. So here's the Brute one, which I know I've shown several times. Boom! Nice little explosion that inflicts some fire damage as well. We've got Ferocious Gale, which adds a little tornado effect, so there's a bit more heft to this, and it looks pretty cool too. I'll show that to you again. There you go. And then last but not least is Phantasmic Burst, which as opposed to two chakrams, now you have four chakrams, and so you do a bit more damage. And it just looks cooler to just have that extra little bit of symmetry um, on the bottom, as opposed to just the two diagonal chakrams on the top. So yeah, definitely pretty cool. But there are samurai skills, and they're both really awesome. So one of them is called Sacred Bird Cry. You can actually assign these abilities to any weapon in any stance. So yeah, you want to put this on your axe? Go ahead. <laughs> go for it. In fact, um, so while there is this ability, and you can go ahead and read the tooltip in your time, um, it's basically just you can modify the ability by using some anima to throw out some projectiles. There's also sacred bird flight. I actually put this on my axe. Look at all that motion. It's ridiculous. And keep in mind, any weapon, any stance. So there's a lot of flexibility with this, and I'm really, really thrilled to have this in the game. So definitely awesome. But I saved, in my opinion, the best for last. Sword, as with Neo 1, gets the most love in this game. It has the most hidden skills. You can see them denoted in blue. So let's just start from the top. Izuna Drop makes a nice return from Neo 1 and from Ninja Gaiden games. Izuna Drop's actually faster than suggested in this tooltip. So yeah, I'm sure you'll love it. Uh, next is Reverse Impact. Which is actually really powerful even though it has a lot of recovery frames and is a lot of fun to use and so i yeah really good ability in my book all right uh, i gotta make sure i save the best for last okay there's this true and through it's actually faster than suggested in the tooltip because they buffed it so it's actually it's definitely a, a worthy ability and it's cool it's very similar to the adachi's devastating rush but it's still cool kermit sword dance is definitely a fan favorite uh, particularly 
with a lot of streamers. I know streamers like Man vs. Game really love this ability, and how could you not? It's such a cool, effective ability and does all sorts of different things. And many players f are surprised by how frequently they can get this ability off. I certainly love it, and I'm sure you will too. Alright, there is one other ability that is similar to Dragonhorn and Dragon Claw called Dragon Fang. So this will compete with a Zuna Drop, but it will but you get a ton of anima with it. And so I've known many characters that like to get over like 10, 15 anima with their character. And so having an ability like Dragon Fang against human opponents just allows them to keep the pressure going with their yokai abilities. Again, I know I haven't talked about it in a video yet, but I will at some point. In my opinion though, probably the coolest ability in the entire game is Severing Spin, at least hidden skill wise, simply because it's just so unique. Uh, many players of course will compare this to Devil May Cry's Judgment Cut or Judgment Cut End, and yeah, of course you can see some sort of inspiration with it, but finding it in Neo definitely seems odd because you wouldn't expect this in a game that you consider a Souls-like. So I'm really happy that they decided not only to put this in, but also make it appropriate for the game. And so yeah, there's many moments that you can definitely finish an enemy and then just scream jackpot because that's what it feels like. So yeah, I'm very happy with this, but that's gonna conclude basically all the hidden skills. I don't think I missed any of them, but every single thing in this game has a hidden skill. And again, if you need want to know where to get them, I will have them in the description below so thank you guys for watching i hope that it helps you figure out what weapons to choose and i'll see you guys next time